Welcome, friends and neighbors. I've been waiting for you. It's the Your Life Blueprint Sound Vibrations for the day of Wednesday. Um, thanks for coming. Thanks for watching these videos. Thanks for contributing. If you have done so, if you haven't done so, there's a link to do that. Very much appreciated these days, contributions. Um, every day we are here and we explore the nature of life. We explore who we are. We explore the energies of each day because that's a, um, it's a very powerful way of exploring the energies within us, the vibrations, the personalities, the archetypes within us each day has a personality. Each day has a vibration. The day of Wednesday is the vibration of the communicator, the communicator. And that's all about knowledge. Wednesday is the day of knowledge. It's the day of learning. It's the day of um, communicating with life, communicating with yourself communicating with your friends, your neighbors, the rest of the world. Communicating increases what? Knowledge. And again, this is a knowledge day. So today, go out and learn something new. Learn more and more and more. And you'll find out where you have this communicator in your own blueprint. You know, knowledge for me is very emotionally soothing because I have the communicator and emotions in my blueprint. So learning something new, studying something, taking a class, taking a workshop, this is so like ah, soothing for me. If I'm in any kind of emotional state, I just have to learn something new and it takes me right out of it. You may have that, but you may be different. You may have it in relationships where gaining more and more knowledge of your partner or your friends really helps you in the relationship. Or you may have it spiritually, where you would be called a jnana yogi. The yoga of knowledge, the yoga of the intellect. Such a person was the great Krishnamurti, spiritual teacher. Um, I'm going to read from him. A little bit to answer he's going to answer a question that was asked to him and I'm going to play the vibration of the day which is based on the interval of the fourth Question, if the mind and the brain are one, then why is it that when a thought or an urge arises, which the brain tells us is ugly, the mind so often goes on with it? Good question. Krishnamurti said, actually what takes place? If a pin pricks your arm, the nerves carry the sensations to your brain. The brain translates it as pain. Then the mind rebels against the pain and you take away the pin or otherwise do something about it. Right? But there are some things which the mind goes on with, even though it knows them to be ugly or stupid. It knows how essentially stupid it is to smoke, for instance. That's, yeah. And yet, one goes on smoking. Why? Because it is like, because, 
It likes the sensations of smoking. And that is all. If the mind were as keenly aware of the stupidity of smoking as it is of the pain of a pinprick, it would stop smoking immediately, immediately. But it doesn't want to see it that clearly because smoking has become a pleasurable habit. It is the same with greed or violence. If greed were as painful to you as the pinprick in your arm, you would instantly stop being greedy. You wouldn't philosophize about it. And if you were really awake to the full significance of violence, you wouldn't write volumes about nonviolence, which is all nonsense. Because you don't feel it. You just talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about it. If you eat something which gives you a violent tummy ache, you don't go on eating it, do you? You put it aside immediately. Similarly, if you once realized the envy and ambition, if you once realized that envy and, and ambition are poisonous, vicious, cruel, as deadly as the sting of a cobra, you would awaken to them. But, you see, the mind does not want to look at these things too closely. No. Nope. In this area, it has vested interests, and it refuses to admit that ambition, envy, greed, and lust are poisonous. Let us have ideals, and in the meantime, it carries on with its poisons. So find out for yourself how corrupting, how destructive and poisonous these things are, and you will soon drop them. But if you merely say, I must not do it, and go on as before, you are playing the hypocrite. But one thing or the other, or be one thing or the other, hot or cold. Be one thing or the other, hot or cold. Be one thing or the other, hot or cold. Go out and learn something new today.